Welcome to our channel. As always, the most up-to-date news is ahead. Subscribe to the channel, like and share your opinions in the comments, we would appreciate it. So let's begin. The West does not know what to do with Russia and with the world changing right before our eyes, too. The consequences of the financial and economic sanctions, which seem to be aimed at Russia, have not yet been realized by the Atlantic elites, almost no one wants to think about the fact that the explosive wave will hit the entire world system, depriving the West of control over it. But there is already an understanding that sanctions alone will not break Russia, as well as the realization of the futility of hopes for a revolt of the dissatisfied population. However, not all of them do there are still those who believe that the Russians will decide to commit suicide themselves. That's why John McCain's friend and heir, Senator Lindsey Graham, simply urged the Russians to kill Putin well, yeah, what else is left if other ways of fighting Russia don't have the necessary effect? Quote, is there a Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful Colonel Stauffenberg in the Russian army? The only way this can end is for someone in Russia to take this guy out. You would be doing your country and the world a great favor. Western politicians' sincere belief that she leads a God-chosen nation, entitled to world domination, and that all her opponents are the devils of hell, has long done her own country a disservice. She does not understand who she is dealing with and how things are in the world. That is, not only does she not recognize Russia's national interests, not only does she not want to see any real Russians, but she prefers to live in the world of her own fantasies and deal with a mythical Russia. Hence the genuine astonishment. How is it that Russians support Putin, don't they see what we see? These imaginary Russians should have overthrown Putin back in 2011, when Biden was in Moscow telling our regime fighters about how he hinted to GDP that he should not return to the Kremlin. These mythical Russians should have turned their backs on Putin back in 2014, when Obama ripped our economy to shreds, and the oligarchs should have conspired to eliminate the president. Now these same Russians have to kill their leader, and not on orders from outside powers, but in order to help their country and the world. One should not be particularly indignant about such statements and appeals, and the fact that the global social networks are filled with appeals to Russian citizens to go out into the streets and protest and overthrow the government. On the contrary, all this only shows how much the Western elites do not understand Russia, how much they do not realize that with their agitation and propaganda, they only unite and mobilize the people of Russia. And most importantly that distorted perception prevents them from making intelligent decisions and calculating the consequences of their own steps. And this applies not only to Russia in the same way the Anglo-Saxon elite no longer understands and does not feel the rest of the world. Otherwise it would not have imposed so many anti-Russian sanctions if it understood how this would be perceived by the rest of the world and what consequences it would lead to in just a couple of moves, that is, after many would be forced to submit to Western restrictions. Otherwise she would not have tried to persuade many large and influential G20 countries, such as India and Turkey, to join the anti-Russian sanctions because she would understand the very essence of their foreign policy strategy that these countries seek to increase their geopolitical weight as independent players, rather than junior partners of the West. Otherwise it would not be trying to be so silly with China now simultaneously urging it to turn its back on Russia and playing the Taiwan card. Because she would know that the first approach is impossible, because it doesn't serve China's interests, while the second approach is detrimental to America's opportunities in its game with China. On Friday, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called for immediate recognition of Taiwan's independence and did so during a visit to the island. Clearly, Pompeo is not an official now, but the current administration is also clearly looking to tease the dragon. The states are afraid of a Chinese attack on Taiwan and want to avoid losing it, like in the case of Ukraine. Is that why they talk about needing, no, of course, not to recognize, but to provide additional guarantees to protect the island from Chinese settlement. But all this is propaganda and self-deception. In reality, the United States cannot keep Taiwan in its orbit even in the medium term. Not because China intends to conquer it by force. Beijing will inevitably reincorporate the island peacefully through the one country, two systems scheme tried out in Hong Kong. Yes, it will not happen tomorrow or in five years, but when China secures its military advantage in coastal waters. That is, it will be able to guarantee that the Americans will not be allowed near its own and the Taiwanese coasts. It is the understanding of the inevitability of this that makes the United States angry. And those who do not want to reckon with reality make proposals to immediately recognize Taiwan. Why do they do this? Some are simply out of sheer stupidity, that is, the belief that the US can forever prevent the reunification of China and Taiwan by holding back the PRC along the entire perimeter in the Pacific region. There is nothing to comment on here it is simply unrealistic in the medium term. The latter are deliberately trying to provoke a conflict or bring it closer. Because the recognition of Taiwan's independence is the second geopolitical major problem, comparable in its consequences to anti-Russian sanctions. 
recognition of Taiwan will automatically lead to Beijing severing diplomatic relations with Washington. And gradually a financial and economic duel of the world's two major economies will begin. But given the total financial and economic conflict already announced by the West to Russia, everything will turn into a conflict between the economies of the East and the West. It is clear that right now Washington does not want this the US is still hoping to form some semblance of a united front against the Middle Kingdom. Moreover, in the current situation of confrontation with Russia, the Anglo-Saxons categorically do not need a second front against China, even a financial and economic one. But then why are they now provoking China in the Taiwanese direction? Why do they believe in the reality of a broad anti-Chinese coalition, and not only a ideological summit for democracy, but also geopolitical, quad with India? The disconnect from reality. The misjudgment of one's own capabilities and the enemy's intentions, some in Washington really do not rule out a Chinese strike on Taiwan right now, all combined to lead to statements about the need for speedy recognition. And this in itself weakens rather than strengthens the American position. Beijing sees that the United States is provoking it with a Taiwan card. And at the same time, they see how the Anglo-Saxons command the European economy by cutting off its ties with Russia, so tomorrow they can do the same with the ties of the EU and China. But Beijing also sees that the West is doing irreversible damage to its position in the global financial system, that is, harming itself. What is left for Chinese leaders to think? That the Atlantists are inadequate, that they do not understand what they are doing. And then Lindsey Graham comes out with a call to kill Putin and Pompeo with a demand to recognize Taiwan, finally confirming Chinese doubts about Anglo-Saxon realism. No one knows where all this will lead, but we are already beginning to reap the benefits. What do you think of this whole situation in the world?